Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vim PF, and today we're going to be covering a Balvenie, something that I'm going to be covering out of this little set. I actually did the 12 year double wood quite a little while ago now, back in April, but now we're on to the middle one, and eventually we'll get around to the 17. But before we look at the dram, I just want to say a quick thank you to one of my newest patron guys, and that's uh, Dale Shepherd. Thank you very much for your pledge and your continued support. Today's one, I say, is a Balvenie. I'm kind of guilty of not covering much Balvenie on the channel. That's not through any kind of distaste for them at all. It's just lack of opportunity. Uh, I've got a lot to get through, so it's uh, one of those things where I know on the uh, on the old violin strings, but I'm getting to them very slowly, as I am everything else. And today we've got the 14-year-old Caribbean cask in this little sample set I picked up from my local supermarket. It's a 43 percenter, just like the rest of them are. This one comes in at roughly 50 pounds in the UK, which is a bit of a step up from the kind of 35 to 37 of the 12, but we'll see if it's really worth it as we get into it. It's part of their core range, so it's not a kind of special release. I think it was originally released as a special release, but now it's part of their core range, readily available, and one of the most recognised names in the kind of Scotch whisky world. And it's definitely in the top 10 of one of the largest distilleries as well, uh, behind the, the big, big, big names like Macallan and uh, Glenfiddich and the like. Uh, of course, it's a Speyside whisky, so it's in that kind of area, but these guys like to experiment with their uh, second part maturations, which is where the double wood of the other two comes from. This one, as the name suggests, the Caribbean cask, it's been finished in rum casks. There's no other way to say it, really. Let's have a look at the nose and the taste and see if it's worth the extra expense, shall we? Now, the nose is just stunning. There's no other way of saying it. I, I had to leave this resting out for a bit because when I first poured the dram, I found the nose a bit flat. But leaving it out on the side for half an hour or so, maybe even a bit less, it's, it's just opened up immensely. Loads of vanillas and some tropical notes that are behind there as well. If I really had to put my finger on it, I might say pineapple. Difficult one for me, I don't really like pineapple. I don't mind the smell, to be fair, but the taste, I don't like the smell, the, the taste at all. Lots of oak in there as well. For the extra two years has made a big difference in terms of oak influence. Let's try a little bit. So it's one of those drams that builds and builds on the tongue, right? So it's just starts out kind of, I'm deciding what I, what, I, what I taste. And then out of nowhere, all this juiciness comes through, this fruitiness comes through. More of those tropical notes that we were talking about on the nose, as well as the vanillas. So it's definitely one of those whiskies that the nose translates to the palate. But it's all around, it's just pretty damn good. If I'm nitpicking, the finish could be a little longer. It's got some nice spiciness to it. But it is medium and it's quite drying on the back end. But uh, that shouldn't take away from the enjoyment of it at all. I think it's, uh, it's a hard one to say about whether I would suggest the 12 or the 14. I mean, definitely if you haven't tried any Balvenies before, go in with the cheapest option. No qualms about that. But uh, the extra kind of £13 odd, £15 to £13 to get this, I'm not sure about it. The only saving grace I would say is that I very, very frequently see this for much, much cheaper. Literally only today at time of recording, I saw this on the Sainsbury's website, UK supermarket Sainsbury's, for £42. That's literally kind of five pounds more than the 12. And at that, it's a complete no brainer. This wins out every time. But I really enjoyed a 12, uh, even with the sherried notes on there. I'm not the biggest fan of sherried whiskies, although when they're good, I do enjoy them. It's difficult for me to say that uh, this one is your go-to at the extra expense, but it is a fabulous whiskey. There's no, there's no qualms about it. And uh, I, I do recommend it. I do recommend it entirely. Even at the £50, it's kind of at the, the top end of my general buying limits. And you should take that with a pinch of salt as well, because I, when I say that, I don't mean I refuse to spend over £50 on a bottle. But I, I will have to know that I will like it if it's above £50. So uh, under £50, I'll take a punt on anything. Um, if I'm not sure, it doesn't really matter. I'll probably find some enjoyment in it. But over £50, I expect a certain benchmark of quality 
that I must know it meets before I buy that bottle. So I must try it like this. And I now feel confident that I would happily spend over 50 pounds on a bottle of this. Even better if it's less. So I expect a certain bench benchmark 